Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Once again, I do appreciate you stopping by and spending your precious time with me during my uh, watchmaking endeavors. Before we start, I'd just like to say, I hope you've had a good new year. And if you do believe in Santa, he was kind to you. But as you can see on the screen there, I've left some links in the description to some of the tools I used when I started. My aim of this video is to, to show that it doesn't have to break the bank to get into this hobby. I think for about 40 or 50 pounds, probably the same in dollars, you can at least have a go. I mean, what we've got here is this uh, little Genevieve wristwatch. I'd like to say it's a lovely little wristwatch, but it's an absolute state. But for 99 pence, I can't grumble. I don't know what it's like anywhere else, but you can't even get a cheeseburger in the UK for 99 pence these days. So I think this is an absolute bargain. I mean, there are some issues. The case has about had it really. It's black and tarnished. As you can see, there's a crack on the crystal. It's very discolored, very scratched. You've got some bent hands. The dolls had it. It's seen better days. But I am quite, quite the confident we're going to get it looking and working better than it was. So that's a good start. The winding stem's just come out on its own and there's a bit of rust on that. So I think we'll open up the case, have a little look inside and see what we're dealing with. Like I say, it is running, but it struggles. Ooh, it's actually a pin pallet. Now, I wasn't expecting that. It's 17 joules and it's got a pin pallet. Ooh. Normally, you might get five joules at most, seven, and as little as one or two. With a pin pallet, the idea is to keep the cost down. But the fact that this has got 17, why well, they didn't go the extra with the other two on the pallet fork, I don't know. Mm -mm. If anyone else does know or has any idea, please leave a comment. I suspect it could be something to do with import taxes. We're going to start to disassemble this watch. We'll take the hands off. Obviously, I use a bit of plastic to protect the dial. It's not in the greatest of shapes, but we don't want to make it any worse if we can help it. So I've got this little tub that I put the hands and the dial into. Keeps it out of the way and keeps it protected. Then we can get the second hands off. So keep them out of the way, keep them safe. Let's have another quick look at this case. As you can see, it is very tarnished. I don't know whether it was gold plated at one point. But again, that black doesn't scrape away. And the rest of the watch isn't too grubby. I've had worse. I'm just gonna run a, a bit of pegwood through some of the grooves. See what falls out. You can see there's a bit of the spring bar still left in there. But we'll put it to one side. Come back to it later. See, so the next thing to do is to take the dial off. 
and that's these two screws here Just give them a bit of a turn until there's a flat side uh, make sure that's lined up with the dial feet pins and the doll just comes away then sometimes you may need to just get a screwdriver or something in between just to pry it up but do it gently and now that dial's out we can see it is it's seen by the days there's some of the varnish or lacquer has come off just by the date there Again, there isn't a lot apart from cleaning it up with a bit of uh, Rodico. There's not a great deal we can do. Yes, and I'm going to get told off for not having any finger cuts on. But again, we'll put that in that little tub. Keep it safe. And then we can get on to dismantling the movement. I'm gonna put the winding stem back in so we can release the power. Well, that's the idea, but This winding stem has got other ideas. That's loose. I mean, that's a, a dead easy fix. We'll just get a bit of Loctite and put it back on. But what we will do instead is we'll remove the balance and then remove the pallet fork and take the power out that way. I would just like to take this opportunity to uh, apologize for the last video. I had some terrible issues with sounds. I say sounds, it's a horrible whining sound that was running through it. I've gone out and I've uh, got myself a new microphone, so hopefully we've sorted those issues. We can take the screw out for the pallet bridge. or cock. When it's got one screw, it's a cock. And then we'll put a, an oiler in the escape wheel and that will stop it going anywhere. And then we can move the pallet fork out of the way. And then once the pallet fork's out of the way, I'm just gonna put a finger up against the wheels and then remove that oiler. And the finger against the wheels just stops it and winding all of a sudden, putting too much pressure on those gears. And you know, when it gets down towards the end, I can move my finger. And as you can see, it will slow down and stop. So now we can move on to the main spring bridge so you normally you've got the ratchet wheel and reversing wheel on the top but I'm surmising on this movement it's underneath yep there we go and the click spring just there the ratchet wheel off and we can remove the mainspring barrel I'm just checking the play in the train of wheels and then we can take off the bridge and remove all of those wheels. It's 
So I am still shocked to the fact that this is a pin palette. Again, it's everything in it strikes me as being like a normal watch with a, a palette fork with jewels. So usually with pin palettes, like I say, you get you know minimum amount of jewels and it's a solid plate on the back. So you've got to line up all your wheels and your main barrel, everything all at once. And they can be an absolute nightmare to get right. So pleasantly surprised with this. So now we can get this date ring off and it's held on by these brass collets. And there is a, a groove on the inside which the date will runs through but I'm just going to replace those for cleaning that's the date corrector I think it's called and this wheel is what changes the date it's dead simple that wheel with a post turns once every 24 hours So off comes the cannon pinion. I'll allow that centre wheel out. And then we can carry on with the keyless works. So again, this part of the watch is what is used to set the hands and wind it up. And this little yoke spring it sort of goes through a hole and it's almost fallen through to the other side. So I've just had to brave it and give it a squeeze and I hope it doesn't fly off into space. And that little part there is to keep the setting lever in. So for cleaning, I am going to take these caps jewels off. But again, remembering we'll put them back straight away before we start reassembling anything else. And then we've got the, the pivots on these wheels. As you can see, there's some rust. So I'll get a, a bit of Eve stick and give those a clean before they go into the cleaning machine. I'll just show you the one pivot here. You can see the difference it does make. Now we can get all of the parts into the cleaning machine. Now when loading this up, I do try and keep groups of parts together. And then at least that way I know what goes where. I do also use these little brass baskets there's not enough recess holes in the, the cleaning machine basket to keep everything in. But again, once they're in, we can get it onto the cleaning machine. And that basket just sits on the end of that motor. It will spin it around in the cleaning solution. So this first jar has the actual cleaning solution in. Again, in this cleaning solution, it's naphtha or lighter petrol lighter fluid, so you don't want any naked flames near it. And then once it's been through that, it goes into this distilled water with a bit of a, a detergent in. It's a, a watch cleaning detergent, and then we'll spin off any excess. And then the third one it goes into is just plain distilled water. Distilled, deionized. And once it's been through those, it goes into the drying chamber. 
I am thinking about introducing a fourth jar with a bit of isopropyl alcohol in and that's just to displace the water you know 10 seconds in there shouldn't do any harm to the watch but it will displace the water and allow it to dry a bit quicker so while that's drying we'll take the case out of the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll get that on the bench this rotary tool and that's just a bit of polish or cutting compound if you like and that's what will help I'm hoping take off all of this tarnish now I appreciate not everybody's gonna have one of these and you know the aim of this is to, to show how easy it is and cheap it is to get into you know I think a bit of brasso and a rag and a good bit of elbow grease would have probably have done the same. So again, just because you haven't got these tools doesn't mean you can't have a go. So that does seem to be working quite well. Now I have got a feeling this was gold plated because there's a almost like a reddish brown band that's coming off and that normally means it's a bit of the gold plating that's being taken away. So we'll have a, a little go trying to replace that. As you can see, can you see that little band there at the top? That's where my thumbnail is. That's a that's the unpolished side. And that is the polished side. So it seems to be working, it's doing well. And we can just speed on with the rest of this case. Now again, when you do the case work, you have got to be careful. If it's got sharp lines, you want to try and keep those sharp lines. You know, you don't want to use something like this and, you know, round over those corners because you'll just ruin the case. I mean, again, just being a hobbyist, I'll use what I've got. You can get like everything machines just for the cases you know if i ever win the lottery you'll know because i'll have a workshop full of tools and there we go give it a bit, bit of a clean off with some kitchen roll take some of that polish off and as you can see it's starting to sparkle So it's gone back into the ultrasonic cleaner and then I'm just putting it in some pickling solution and then distilled water and then we're going to give it a go of gold plating it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try brushing the gold plating on. Now nickel plating, I have got a jar of nickel plating solution but to get that much gold plating solution, yeah, I'll wait for that lottery win. But in the meantime, what we'll do is we put the positive onto the actual case and then the negative onto a, a cotton ball bud. I don't know what it's like the rest of the world, but the sticks on the cotton ball buds in the UK are paper, so they do suck up the solution quite well. And then we're just going to start brushing it up. That's like everything I am learning. I did have a camera above, but all it filmed was the back of my head. So unfortunately, that's the shot you've got. But now we've got the parts back from the cleaning machine. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner. The first thing we're going to do is get the mainspring back in the barrel. Now, I bought this ages ago. It's a cheap Chinese mainspring winding kit and it's useless. 
This is only the second spring it's ever worked on. And I do try almost with every watch. But this is one of those tools where a cheap clone just isn't good enough. You know, you've got to save up and spend the money out on something proper. And in the meantime, I think I'll just still do it by hand. Again, this will give you an idea as to some of the tools you can actually get. You know, it's not needed, but it does make things easier. And what we're doing there is just adding a bit of oil into the mainspring barrel before we put the mainspring in. And then just pop that in, press down on the top, and then it goes. I'll then use a pin vise for the barrel arbor to get that in. I just find that's the easiest way for me. And this little white thing, this is to help put the barrel lid back on. As you'll see in a minute, it's got a lid. But first we'll add a little bit more oil to the spring at the top and then onto the barrel arbor itself. That's just so we can slip easily inside the barrel. And then on goes the lid. And then we just press down and then that'll secure it. Put these jewels back in and before we do, we'll add some oil. As you can see, it's just a tiny drop. And then we can start to reassemble it. Now this is the housing for the clutch. So that's where the winding stem goes in. Then in goes this little part. This holds the winding stem in. So that's in place. I'm just going to turn it over, give it a couple of turns to that screw, and that will keep it in place. And before we put the mainspring barrel in, I'll add a, a drop of oil. Then we can start adding in the trainer wheels, starting with the escape wheel. And then we've got the fourth wheel. And the fourth wheel is the one that's in charge of the seconds of the hand. Then your third wheel or inter intermediate wheel. Then you've got your your second wheel, which is your centre wheel. And then your first wheel is your mainspring. Now with those in, we can try and get the bridge seated. And again, this is always one of the the awkward parts. Inevitably, it's the escape wheel. That gives you the trouble. But again, we are quite lucky. Being a pin pallet, like I say, the whole of that plate on the back normally is, is one solid part. You know, and the only other plate is for the balance spring. There we go, that's just fell in. It's all free running. So holding it down with a bit of pegwood, I'm going to get a couple of the screws in. Just holding it with a peg pegwood, it just stops any of the pivots jumping out the jewel holes. But again, I will check in between each screw. Just 
give it a turn, make sure nothing's frozen or caught. And once you've got a couple of screws in, you can take the pegwood away, it's not going to go anywhere. Third and final screw. Now the screws are aren't, I should say, in the best of condition. There is a, a spot of rust on a few of them, but again, that's another tool which I don't have. But it is possible to refinish screws. But in the meantime, we're going to. Get the main spring bridge on and it's going to start with putting this crown wheel in and we'll add a bit of oil onto the click spring and the ratchet wheel that's just gone onto the barrel bridge as you can see so it's a case now of getting these lined up And then you can get the screws in. Again, this side of the watch, there's no fine pivots. So usually you're okay. You don't need to use any pegwood. Now I have been on the old uh, Tinterweb to see what I can find out about this movement. It's the ORA234. And uh, by all accounts, it was uh, produced by a company that was founded in Como in Italy in 1927. Now, I'm not going to try and pronounce the name, but I've uh, left in the description. You can have a go yourself. Now, these uh, particular company they specialized in making movements and watches of the Roscoff type which are also known as poor man's watches or dollar watches and that's an apt name for this particular one they were cheap and simple watches and they used a, a pin lever escapement instead of the more precise lever escapement I mean now I do know it was easier and cheaper to produce that but if you're going to go for those jewels, why not go for those extra two and, and make it a really good movement? But I mean, it is one of the better pin pallet movements because of the extra jewels. And it was used in some more prestigious watches, such as the, the SEMA WWW, also known as one of the, the Dirty Dozen watches and they were issued to the British soldiers in the 1940s. Now what you can see me doing here is I need to take off this balance spring and to do that there's a, a brass pin holding the spring in. So I was trying to use the tweezers to push it out but it wasn't going to budge. I did manage to get it out but it was off camera. So what I'll show you now is oil in this jewel and it is exactly the same just a tiny spot into the middle only this capsule is easier to get in and out like I say on that balance spring there's two screws underneath so you need to take the balance wheel off undo those screws and then reassemble it again and again just like the uh, gold plating it was the back of my head I filmed Okay, with that on, it's time to see how well this will run. Now, a little tip, sometimes if you give it a shake, when you've got it almost lined up, then the pivots fall into the holes. A little bit of manipulation. 
little shake and there you go it fires right up and that looks a lot stronger than when we started Again, doing these screws up to be really careful. You can gently try and hold it down with a bit of pegwood, but I don't even do that. I just go really slowly and gently. Then you tend to find if it's not seated properly, as you get towards the end, it will just stop. If that happens, don't go any further. Undo it and make sure it's seated properly. That's the watch working. Give it a bit of oil. Again, these are just tiny, tiny amounts of oil on these pivots. You know, you will see me go in and clean up sometimes. Just like that. And a bit of Rodico. Clear away any excess oil. And then we can turn it over and start on the keyless works. Now what I'm doing is adding a bit of grease, that blue stuff. And I usually use that where you've got metal on metal. So I have the blue grease, then there's the red oil, and then there's a really light blue oil and the, the differences between them are, are really the viscosities. So like I say, yeah, grease you use on metal on metal parts, then the red oil on the slower moving parts or anything that swivels or goes on a, a pivot like the oak spring. And then for your jewels and the trainer wheel pivots, it's the, the lightest oil off the top of my head is Mobius 9010. That's just a, a brand of modern day synthetic oils. In the old days, they would use natural oils, you know, natural greases. So that's why some of them, when you do open them, can smell. But again, I'm just adding some of this red oil, this slightly thicker viscosity oil. And that's on some of the these posts in the minute wheel and the crown wheel, which I'm just putting in there. And then the yoke. Then again, we'll put a bit of grease on the end of the winding stem. Now I'm putting the stem in now because that'll lift up that clutch. So the oak will sit in there a little recess where it's supposed to sit correctly. Just like that. Then with that in position, I'm gonna add a bit of uh, grease to the bottom of this yoke, and that's where the, the yoke spring will rub along it. Say so metal on metal, bit of grease. Again, does it fly off? No. Before the kind of pinion goes on, again we'll add a, a very little bit of oil. And we'll put 
push that down firmly. Then we can add in the minute wheel. And then we've got the setting lever spring or cover plate. And what I like to do with these is I'll put one screw in, just like that. I won't cinch it all of the way up. But then I'll add a, a bit of grease to this, sort of like crab claw or lobster claw before pushing it into place. And then we add in the final screw. And once that in, we can put the hour wheel on. And then we can put this wheel back in for the date. Again, I think I'm surprised at how simple that is. You know, one wheel, a screw, there's a post on that wheel. It will turn once every 24 hours, turn in the date. make sure everything goes then we can get the date ring back in we should remove a couple of these collets and these are the brass pillars if you like with a recess the groove so we get the the date ring located in the remaining ones and then we can put these back in Then once they're in, we'll go along and do them all up. Make sure they're tight. And that is a slight error there. I should have put that over first. But it's easy, easy fixed. Let's check if it works. There we go. So now onto the hands. If you remember, they're all bent. So we'll see what we can do. Again, I've not really done any work on hands. So this is, you know, apart from looming them, this is a first for me. So spoiler alert. Yes, mistakes were made. As I did mention earlier, I have left some links in the description to some of the sort of tools I used when I started. Now they're not affiliated links in any way. They're just there to give you an idea of the, the few tools you can get started with. And then if you do get into it, Yes, there are a, a million and one other tools you can buy. But again, I know it's not for everybody. I know some people enjoy watching. But I just thought if you want to give it a go, like I say, this, this watch was 99p and for $40, $50 you can get the tools you need to give it a go. And like I say, if you like it, and that's when you start thinking about getting other things. And as you can see, we have straightened that hand slightly and it's time for the minute hand. But I think I'm gonna actually try and stick it to the block while I'm looking at that. And so what you can see me doing there is putting it on a bit of a, a block with some holes in. I've filled those holes with a bit of shellac then we warm that up and it goes hard and it will keep it in place. And that way that allows us then to get an oiler underneath where the bend is and press down in the opposite direction, hopefully straightening that hand it is working. We go a little bit more. Now, 
hands are quite springy. So it's a, it's a bit of a dance between going too far and not far enough. But at this point I thought, I'm going to try get a bit of pegwood, apply a bit of pressure and a bit of heat by rubbing it. And that might help flatten it. What I don't want to do is go too mad and get the end of the hand. And bend it up just like that. See, at this point, I could have kicked myself. But like I keep saying, we're all learning. I know the next time I think about looking at hands, I shan't be doing that. But I think I know I'll straighten it out, I'll get some tweezers. I know it won't be perfect. But where I'd bent it, I'd weakened it. And so it snapped. Mm. We'll move on to the dial, see what we can do with that while we think about the hands. So we're gonna have my finger cuts on this time and we'll give the dial a rub with some Rodico. Again, that's all we can do. While I was doing this, I was thinking about those hands and what can I do? Because now your minute hand is shorter than the hour hand. I did go through, see if I had any donor hands, but I didn't. So I'll come to the conclusion. The only thing I could do was to make the hour hand smaller. Rightly or wrongly, but at least now you know what's what. So we can get that dial back on. Drop these two dial feet screws. And like I say, you're only giving them half a turn. And then we set the date, as you see it spring over there. Doesn't sit perfectly in the window. That means we can now get the hands on. So there we are, there's that shortened hour hand. Get that pressed down. And now the minute hand. Press that into place. And then with those in place, we can get the second hand on. I'll just use the end of my tweezers just to gently press down on that. And then we can get it back into the case. We can get the bezel on with a, a new crystal. It hasn't got the date window, but you can still see the date clearly. And again, we're going to put one of these case screws back in. The other one is scrap. So I'm going to keep my eyes open for a suitable replacement. But for the time being, we're just going to pop the one in. Then we can get the back pressed on and see what we're left with. So there we are, we're almost there. We'll get a strap on it and we'll put it on the wrist, see what it looks like. But thank you guys, I really do appreciate you stopping by, giving me your time and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.